Hello everybody, welcome back to Forza Horizon 4 with another rally car build. This is a Mustang because April 17th is officially recognized as National Mustang Day. I think that's the date when it was first released in 64. So, yeah. Now, this is not a 64, this is a 1968 Bullet Mustang, everybody knows that. Probably the most famous car chase in the history of cinema. And I'm gonna go racing up a mountain with it. Now, we have had modern muscle cars go before, but not a classic. And this might actually stand a pretty decent chance. Here's the problem, though. That's all well and good. But I want that. That's just better in every way. So I'm going to see, and that just kind of ruins it, you know? Just, that's just wrong. On so, so many levels, so is that. Get that garbage off of my bullet, okay? We have to have the bullet body kit. I'm sorry. Will it be slower? Yes, I'm not putting these on. I refuse to. It's stupid. Will it be slower? Yes. However... I want my bloody bullet. We do have two seven fives on the rear, on the front and three four fives on the rear. Those are some big tires. We will widen them. We will widen them. We're gonna want as much grip as possible, considering we're not gonna have very much aerodynamics. Now, this is going to be interesting. This will be an interesting experiment because we've never had a car with run without Forza. I guess we have had we we had the buggy, the buggy ran without Forza Aero, but the buggy was a bit terrifying and didn't have as much control. So I'm expecting, hopefully, this to be a bit better in the control department. We're gonna try the standard engine just to see if it's possible. I don't think it is because it's because we are only halfway through S1 class. That being said, power is, PI is shooting up quite rapidly. This engine actually gets an awful lot of power. But not enough to get us to the top of the class, unfortunately. I mean, that's a lot of power. That's actually the devil's number of horsepower. That's a lot of power from the stock engine. I did not expect that. But it's not going to be enough. We have the 2.6 liter I6. We have the 5.2 liter V8. 8.4 liter V10, 7 liter V8, 6.5 liter V12, or the racing V8. Considering we just had the racing V8 go up, did the racing V8 go up last time? No, it didn't because we had the bubble car, right. I feel like sticking with Ford though and going with the 7 liter V8. I mean, for God's sake, it's a GT40 engine here. And in fact, having a GT40 engine in a Mustang is not completely unheard of. So, provided it can reach the top of the class, we'll go for that. Which it can't. That's really surprising. This build is getting very expensive and a lot more complicated than I thought it would be. If I were going with the V12, this doesn't make it, I don't know what, there's literally nothing that will, because this is the most powerful engine swap in the whole game. Alright, thank you. It is going to take over 1200 horsepower to get to the top of the class, but there you go. This is scary. Um, why is it this much power? <laughs> That's my concern. <laughs> I am deeply concerned for my Mustang, because that's an absurd amount of power. That's 1,300 horsepower in my Mustang. And yeah, it's on rally tires. However, that's a 1,300 horsepower car. Now, just curious, what would the arrow do? What would the arrow do? 8 PI, 1 PI. So... I only gain a few PI from that, in terms of handling. Yeah. Well, let's see if I can channel my inner Steam McQueen. 
the wild card bullet mustang it's kind of just trying to beat a 226 5 set by that Austin Martin now here's my main concern it has the is the second most powerful car we've ever had 1310 horsepower and it has no aerodynamics at all because I don't care if it's slower, I'm not ruining the good looks of this car. I, I mean, for God's sake, people. I mean, that's just, I will do a lot, I will do a lot of bad things to cars to make them fast, but I refuse to ruin the, one of the, probably the most iconic movie car of all time, except for maybe the DMC DeLorean. But, yeah, what this is going to have is ludicrous acceleration. And hopefully lots of grip. Because those are big tires. And it's a good weight, 13, 3,000 pounds. It's not crazy light, but it's also not too absurdly heavy. Which means it might not get tossed around by the bumps. That's our hope anyway. We shall see how that actually turns out. It is a bit floaty. Uh... You know, we're just gonna do it. Yeah, um, brakes are not very good, I will be honest. Brakes are not very good, and it does get a little bit floaty at high speeds. That's 130 miles an hour. This thing, this thing is brutal. Jesus Christ. If I can control this car at all, which seems unlikely, I will be honest. It just, it brings a whole new sense of speed to the course. This thing is terrifying. That is ridiculous. The speed it reaches is scary. I think that's the best way to describe it, is scary. Because we've had fast cars. We've had very fast cars. We've had stupidly fast cars. We have not had 130 miles an hour heading into that rock face wall. That is something we've never had before. <laughs> Jesus. That... Okay. I'm very curious as what this time is going to be, because we've actually gone backwards part of this. It's not going to be a very good time, let's just put it that way. It's not going to be a very good time, we've had some very bad corners. We've had a, well, um, an outbreaking maneuver so bad that I actually just did a res I just completed the spin out. And that was faster than trying to do the traditional turn left. I turned right to turn left in that case. On that front straightaway. So yeah, it's not going to be a very good run. Mm, I don't know. This, I'm, I'm doubting this vehicle as a serious contender of the top five. I will be honest. Because it's not very good. <laughs> but we're gonna see how it goes. I mean, it's not gonna be the worst time ever recorded for a first run. A two... A 2.34. Not terrible. However... There is certainly a lot of room for improvement. Okay. Let's just have a nice, smooth, clean run. That would be nice. I will be honest, that would be very nice if we'd have a nice, smooth run. If we, as long as we don't have any problems, we don't have to break ourselves, we don't go too fast in the corners, we will get a half-decent time, I think. I'm hoping for a top five. That will require doing a sub three minute. A sub 2.30, sorry. Sub 2.30. We'll see if that's possible. It's not. It's going to be terrible around the corners. But maybe it can make it up with some sheer brute acceleration. Very similar to the um, Plymouth that went out last time. The atomic thingy. Because that's 143. Get on the brakes nice and early. There we go. That's what we want. I mean, this thing is faster than the Atomic. 
the atomic was very fast. This is what we call absurdly fast. It... <laughs> So let's just see if we can control it around these corners, which is not looking very likely, I will be honest, based on the way that it's moving across these bumps. It's not the biggest fan of going in a straight line. The traction is not too bad, but just the sheer lack of turn in and out and all sorts, just turn in general really, just the sheer lack of turn, that is a scientific racing term. Um, is apparent, shall we say. And yes, I know that I don't have any arrow on it. I'm aware of that, but I don't care. I don't care. I want my good looks. I mean, I'm ruining the good looks with some mud, but... Okay, that's some... Um, quite oversteer. I didn't really intend for that much oversteer, I will be honest. There we go. That's a beautiful double apex, I will say. Beautiful double apex. Now I chuck in a little bit. Now, power, 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 there we go. Not the worst line you could ever take through there. Had a little bit of down on the brakes just to get it nice and smooth through these corners. There we go. This is looking to be a much better run, at least. At least it's going to be a clean one. There is still some room for improvement, a little bit less sideways in a few corners. But all in all, it's not too bad. Let me a little more sideways through there would have been nice. Help get that front end turn just that little bit more. Now got on the power. There we go. It's all about getting that front end turn. That's 131 heading in on the final straightaway. It's not gonna be a terrible run, you know? It's not gonna be terrible. It might not be a sub 3 minute, but it's going to be a 3 a 2.33, a 2.30, sorry, 2.36. That's not bad. That's, that is, I believe, just a tenth of a second off of the Porsche 911. Not bad. Final run for the Mustang Bullet. I want it to beat the Porsche. I, I know it can beat the Porsche. I know this vehicle can beat the Porsche 911, that brand spanking new one. It's all a matter of can I control the Fury? Can I control the sideways? If I can, can if I can get it, because you need to get this vehicle sideways in order to get it turned. But, sometimes I go a little too sideways, like we saw in the hairpin at the hill. So if we just not do that, that will be easily faster. Because that run was actually pretty solid, with the exception of a few sideways moments, that was pretty darn solid. So, yeah, let's just see if this vehicle can beat a modern Porsche 911 with aerodynamics, rear engine, German engineering, etc. In which case, I guess you could say nothing beats a good old-fashioned American car fitted with an Italian engine. Yeah, that's how the saying goes. Or you can just say power beats all. That's another easy way of saying it. I don't know if it was fast at that section, but it seemed a bit better. We're carrying a bit more speed anyway. We've gotten two wheels, apparently. Don't know when. Ugh. I, I'll be honest, I did not want air on that corner right there at that moment because that doesn't help you turn and we kind of need to turn we need all the turning we can help we can get Duh. nope that's a missed checkpoint <laughs> how did we get away with that we carried more speed through the corner how did we carry more speed through that corner considering we were all well, about to hit the rock face and die you know, that was very lucky. Um, uh, yeah, it is all about being slow on the way in, getting that late apex, and then getting on that sheer speed as fast as two sideways. No, as far too sideways. We don't want that shenanigans. Oh, no, that's facing the wrong way, Mustang. Thank you. <laughs> 
There we go. I don't know if this run is any faster, but we're gonna give it a go, darn it. It is getting bounced around quite a lot on this final run. Better through this corner. No, we're not. No, we're not. No, we're not. No, we're not. We're not stopping. We're not stopping. Ugh. I mean, that's a way to take a corner. It's not really the ideal way, I will be honest. That was kind of a panic and slam on the brakes that I thought we were going and then we weren't going. It's kind of just going all over on this final run. Because I am just going as flat out as I physically think I can. Let's see if this run is any faster. Come on, baby. Put that power down. Please. Please. Yeah. Oh, it's much faster. Oh, 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 it's two seconds faster. It doesn't quite beat the Corvette. But it's a 228. How is that possible? I think it might have just squeaked into the top five. Not as very close. It is six tenths of a second slower than that 2009 Corvette. But it's faster than the Nissan. It's faster than the Mercedes. It's two seconds faster near enough to than the Porsche. That's a seriously impressive time. And remember, this vehicle has no aero. It has no aerodynamics at all. And it did a 2.28.7. That was achieved by just pure, pure acceleration. It does not carry corner speed. It doesn't. I got very lucky with that wide corner that was able to get me about 60 miles an hour on the crest of the hill. I got very lucky there. But, oh, that was close. Whew. So there you go. You don't need handling sometimes to go fast. All you need is ludicrous power. That is going to be it for this episode of Forza Horizon for you back with more.